Hey guys, what's going on? Kellen with Droid Life again, and I just want to talk a little bit more today about the LG Nexus 4 because I'm finalizing my review, and uh, we haven't really done a really clean sort of look at the device. You know, Tim and I did a live unboxing of it, and we sort of showed you it that way, but we wanted to talk about it one more time since this is sort of like the phone of the year for super Android fanatics. Um, so let's just talk about what we've got here. Basically, so, well, as you know, this is Google's flagship device of the year. I'm trying to get you guys nice shots of that glittery backside. Uh, but it's built off of the LG Optimus G. So it's got a quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro processor, 2 gig RAM. Um, this has an 8 megapixel camera on the back. Um, it's got an Adreno 320 GPU. There is no LTE, though, and I know that's been a sticking point for many of you. No LTE, so it's just HS HSPA+. Plus which is still plenty fast, but it's definitely not the newest, latest and greatest wireless network technology in LTE. So it's a bit of a sticking point. This has 16 gig of internal storage in it. They also make an eight gig version. Um, no micro SD slot, so you're just stuck with whatever you've got internally. But this one only costs $349, no contracts whatsoever. The eight gig is $299 and again, no contracts. So I've got a speaker down here in this bottom right. Again, there's the camera, there's the Nexus logo. This is that crystal reflection back that I keep saying to show you because it's really nice. Um, also up top, we got a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Um, on the outside here, there's your volume rocker and your SIM tray slot right here. Um, on this side, it's just a lock switch. And then on the bottom, you actually have a micro USB port and two screws in case you need to get in there and tinker with anything. Um, on the front is a 4.7 inch IPS plus display. Uh, it's really nice. It's HD. It, it's the same one that was in the, in the Optimus G. So we've seen it plenty. It's beautiful. But one of the cool things that Google's done, it's going to be tough to capture on camera, but they actually made the screen sort of cascade over the, over the outside. And so it sort of has this rounded feel to it. So when you put your finger on it and you swipe, there's no edge. It's not like you're coming from a sharp edge and then swiping. You know, a lot of people start their finger over here. So it's just this really smooth sort of feel. Also this, I think it's called G2 Hybrid Touch is what LG's using it. And the screen just feels soft to the touch. Like when you touch it, it doesn't feel like there's any resistance. Your finger just kind of glides over. It's really, really smooth. So they've done a really nice job of this display. Definitely one of the best. Um, also then, of course, it's running Android 4.2, which is the newest version of Android. So it's got the new, um, it's got this new toggle for quick settings. We can go into settings and I'll just show you that it's 4.2. You guys know this. We've done enough uh, 4.2 videos. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in there. But you know, you can swipe up to get to Google Now because we have on-screen buttons. You can switch tasks by, you know, swiping through this. So it's got all the goodies you'd want in Android, um, but it's got all these beefed up specs and stuff like that. So overall, my impressions are I really, really like this device. While I wish there would have been LTE in it, I actually personally could live with HSPA+. Plus. I've been using a GSM Galaxy Nexus off and on for a long time now, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, but I will say that the battery life has been a bit of a disappointment for me. I was expecting it to last, you know, almost two days. I know that sounds like a stretch, but, you know, Google sort of said, like, we left LTE out because we want battery to be good. Um, and then the battery life's not really that awesome once you turn off Wi-Fi. So I had some battery issues. I, I guess I shouldn't say issues. They just haven't, the battery life hasn't blown me away. I'm getting anywhere from 9 to 15 hours, but I would say mostly on the lower end of that. Uh, but performance, responsiveness, touch, all that stuff is as good as you would expect in a high-end phone these days. Um, and then the only other thing I guess I would say that I don't like is the, while, while I keep showing you how awesome this glittery glass back is, it does scare me a little bit. My Optimus G back just cracked all the way down like this, and I don't know how I did that. I don't remember dropping it. I don't remember doing anything that would have caused such a thing. So it concerns me a little bit. I do think that Google... At least I think I remember them mentioning that they've sort of made the edges stick up so this frame, it actually sticks out just a little bit more over the, over the glass back. So when you set it down, you're actually resting it on the frame rather than the glass. So hopefully that will help a little bit. They also sell a bumper case and things like that. But um, To finish this up, let's just look at what it looks like compared to a couple of the other big devices out there. So on the left, this is the Galaxy Nexus, which you all remember from last year. So you can see the shape of them. They're actually almost identical. Now, the LG is a little bit wider than the Galaxy Nexus. Um, you know, the screen resolution is a little bit different, things like that. 
Um, but once you get to the back, the differences are very noticeable. You can see this is sort of plastic material, sort of a soft touch plastic. This is definitely glass. The LG Nexus 4, definitely more high-end feeling the device than the Galaxy Nexus. Camera obviously centered there and is off to the left side here. So thickness wise, um, I wouldn't necessarily say the LG is thinner by any means. In fact, in some places it's thicker, some places it's thinner. So that's what it looks like there anyway. Um, also interesting note, the Galaxy Nexus, you'll remember had these three pins right here, which were supposed to be for connecting to docks and things like that. And Google completely ditched them with this uh, LG device. They decided that was a, an experiment. They didn't need to go down that road anymore. So uh, here it is next to the Galaxy S3. So you can see similar size again. Um, here's the back side. I believe the LG Nexus 4 is only going to be in black, although Carphone Warehouse was trying to sell a white version, but they didn't even have pictures of it, so I don't know if it actually does exist or not. Um, and then the Galaxy S3, I believe, is going to be a little bit thinner. So that's sort of that. Um, this is just wanted to do a quick overview for the review again. Um, LG Nexus 4, I'm really, really liking this phone. Just wish battery life was a little bit better. You know, I wish there was LTE, but to me, that's not a deal breaker. Um, the 16 gig of internal storage also enough for me. Cameras greatly improved. Obviously, we get Android 4.2 and all the new good stuff in there. So overall, I don't really have a lot of complaints. It's been a joy to use. I actually really, really, really like this device. It's going to be, you know, my daily device until something dethrones it. Uh, that could be the Droid DNA in a week. Not necessarily sure, but this sort of, you know, stock Android is where Android fanboys like me like to be. So anyways, we're Droid Life. Check out our full review of LG Nexus 4.